Hey everybody, it's Winifred here. I am going to show you how to make this delicious meatloaf. I ran across the recipe. My husband loves meatloaf. I can take it or leave it, but this <laughs> recipe is really good. My daughter's videoing me and so if it's shaking a little bit, it's because she's laughing. But anyway, um, first I need to go ahead and put a chopped onion into the skillet with a little bit of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter, along with three minced cloves of garlic. So that's what I'll do to begin with. I'll put my onions in. Stir those around. You do the onions before you do the garlic. You let the onions get sauteed and translucent and then you put the garlic. So we'll cut those up a little bit so they can be cooking away and then we'll scoot back over here. You use two pounds of ground beef, and mine is farm-raised beef, grass-fed beef. You use that along with one egg. You use uh, one cup of milk. You use one cup of breadcrumbs. These are Planko gluten-free breadcrumbs because I'm trying to cut that out of my diet. Plus, you use a teaspoon of thyme, sprinkle that in, and then you use kosher salt, but my husband enjoys um, the pink Himalayan salt, so I'm using a teaspoon of that. Sprinkle that in. Then you use a tablespoon of Worcestershire. So this is for your basic meatloaf recipe. So you combine everything together while your onions are sauteing. Some people can do this with their hands. I'm not one of those people. Um, it bothers me a little bit. So I watch videos and I use a fork. So I take my fork and I pat it down and blend and blend. And the milk really helps it to um, gain the consistency you need to gain to make it pliable and work with. So, this meat is cold right out of the refrigerator, um, and it's fresh. So, you want to blend it as well as you can to combine all the thyme and salt, as well as the other ingredients. I think the key to this meatloaf is that you do saute the onions. Uh, they're not crunchy, and it gives it a, a bolder flavor without a bolder bite. Um, like I said, this is two pounds of meat, and I've whisked it together with this fork. And I get down in the bottom to make sure I've got it mixed up good. Okay, then I'll go over here, and I will check my onions, which are cooking away. And like I said, you want them to get, become translucent. So I'd say they need to cook for, you know, a good four minutes or more. Um, there went one on the stem. And then I'll add the garlic. But this this has to cook down first because garlic will burn. Some people will put their garlic in too soon and it burns up. So the flavor's gone and the consistency's gone. So you have to do the onions first. So we'll keep those going. And then I'll show you what you do to the topping. What you're gonna do, some people put meatloaf in a loaf pan, but this one calls to put it out on your regular baking pan lined with aluminum foil and sprayed with Pam. And I'll make a loaf out of it rather than putting it in a loaf pan. And it'll make a nice size loaf. And then once I cook it, I'll put a topping on it. And I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute, about the cooking. But this is a half a cup of ketchup, a teaspoon of spicy mustard, and a, make a nice size loaf. And then once I cook it, I'll put a topping on it, and I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute, about the cooking, but this is a half a cup of ketchup, a teaspoon of spicy mustard, and a teaspoon, or is that a tablespoon? Teaspoon of brown sugar. Or tablespoon. It, tablespoon, thank you, Sarah. Tablespoon of brown sugar. I tried to prep everything. And so you just combine that with your other fork. See, I didn't use the same fork. My other fork. And you mix it up really good. Some people like to heat this on the oven, but it doesn't make any difference. There's no need, really. 
You can buy this really good. And the recipe says if you like ketchup and glaze to add a little more ketchup. So to half of that cup of ketchup, I'm going to add a, as Lisa says, add, I'm going to add a big zhuzh of ketchup because my family likes it and it makes for a nice glaze. So I've combined that and the consistency is nice and no lumps. And so I'll check on my onions. I might have should have put those on, oops, sooner, but that's okay. Looks like a lot of onions, but the two pounds of beef can handle this much onion in a meatloaf. The oven, like I said, is set on 350. Once we combine the garlic to this, the aroma is going to be even better. I'm going to give that about another minute to cook, and then I'm going to put in the garlic, okay? Um, for a quick intermission, Sadie thinks she sees her reflection in the refrigerator, so this Sadie is what is, we're doing right Sadie's now. Sadie's our, our sous chef. <laughs> She's helping us out. So the meatloaf, you don't, and you don't want to overwork your meatloaf. You know, you want to combine it good and get it mixed in good because you want all your flavor to be consistent, but you don't want to overwork it. So I'm going to leave it like that. Let me wipe my hands off from the hamburger that just got on me. And, okay, so here are the onions. They could probably be more translucent, but they don't, that, that's good. Okay, there's my, my uh, minced chopped garlic. I'll combine that in and stir it around so that the flavor will be even. And it's already smelling delicious. Meatloaf is good. It's a crowd pleaser. It freezes well. It feeds a lot of people. It's good the day you eat it. It's good on a sandwich the next day. Um, it's just a good staple, staple meal to have on your menu. Um, and especially if you've got great beef, which our beef came from um, Jeff's nephew, who's from Pennsylvania, and it's from farm-raised cattle that are grass-fed. All natural, so I'm sure the beef will be very lean and very tasty. Um, I can smell that garlic right now, so I'm going to give it about 30 more seconds because I don't want the garlic to overcook. And then we're going to pull it off and combine it in our meatloaf, okay? I'm going to let it continue to cook. And then you just dump it right into the meatloaf. <laughs> and I listen kudos to Lisa who does this in her kitchen all the time because and to do it as well as she does it is impressive because this is not my forte I have to be all prepped and planned out to do it or I freak out so I appreciate y'all being interested in the meatloaf and wanting to learn about it so okay so then you take your I can smell that garlic right now, so I'm gonna give it about 30 more seconds. I said I want the garlic to overcook. And then we're gonna pull it off and combine it in our meatloaf, okay? I'm gonna let it continue to cook. And then you just dump it right into the meatloaf. Lisa, who does this in her kitchen all the time, because, and to do it as well as she does, it is impressive, because this is not my forte. I have to be all prepped and planned out to do it, or I freak out. So I appreciate y'all being interested in the meatloaf and wanting to learn about it, so, okay. So then you take your, your um, onions and your your sauteed onions and garlic, which is two to three cloves of garlic and a small yellow onion, and you dump it right into the meatloaf. And then with your fork, you just combine. Sounds crazy, doesn't it, to put, some, cook, 
breadcrumbs right there on the side. Oh, great, thanks. I'm gonna use my small spatula when I get finished to get every little piece out of here. But you stir it and combine it, get everything flowing, and then I'm gonna dump it onto the sheet here and then take my hands, which I'll wash real quick with my soap right there, and then I'll make it into what looks like a log. And then I'll show you how we put the topping on after the fact. All right, so I'm gonna dump it right here. See, it's a makes a big piece, makes a big meatloaf. Okay, and I'm taking my scraper and getting all the excess. Okay, as I leave that right there, I'm gonna wash my hands. And then I'm gonna gently or gingerly pat this into a log. And you can make it as high as you want to, as tall, as round, as oval, whatever your taste, you know, that you prefer, how you want it to look. I sort of like mine to look like a football, kinda. Okay, pat it together to get it nice and consistent so it'll, you know, be nice and a firm as it cooks. Okay. Mine's a little bit bigger than a football, but you get the gist. Okay. Now, what I do next is I take a knife. I take a knife to the top of it. Let's see. I better use a better knife. Hold on. a butter knife and I, you place lines in the top of your meatloaf so that once it cooks, you do like that and it makes an indentation as it cooks. So after the 30 minutes, you're able to pull it out of the oven and it's got like a little area where your, your sauce can lay down in and won't, it won't all go down the sides. It'll sort of be able to absorb up on the top too. So there you go. There's the meatloaf. We're gonna put it in the oven. 30, 30 minutes, Sarah? 40 minutes. 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes to begin 350. With. And then when I come back, which this won't be delayed, but I'll show you how to put the sauce on top and then you cook it for 30 more. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with the sauce. Hey everybody. The meatloaf is out of the oven for the first session. It cooked 30 minutes at 350. Um, here it is. Still retained its shape, uh, but it's still got to cook. So here we're taking our mixture of ketchup, spicy mustard, and brown sugar, and we're gonna pour that on the top. And you don't have to necessarily worry about staying on the top, but you don't want it to all go down on the sides. Eventually it will, so I like to put most of mine on the top and let it just cook where it may. So, spreading it out. And you can make as much glaze as you like. But anyway, after you do that, you put it back in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes. Um, ovens may vary depending on how done you like your meat, but I'm gonna put mine in for 30 minutes and then I will send you a picture of the finished product. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you got the um, ingredients down and if not, I will shoot you a text. Thanks, have a great day.